Welcome to Brooklyn Avenue in the heart of beautiful Leslieville. This is one of central Toronto's new up and coming neighborhoods. This area used to be a poor area. It was considered a working class area and the people that lived in this area were people that worked in the factories and warehouses in the neighborhood and a lot of there was a lot of pollution back then because the factories would pollute certain areas and this is where you live if you weren't a professional and didn't make a lot of money and you were just a working class guy working in a factory back in those days even people working in factories could afford houses but times have changed if you want to buy a house in Leslieville we are talking a cool million dollars plus. So nowadays there aren't too many factory workers living in Leslieville. Nowadays you have pharmacists, doctors, lawyers and high paid professionals. They're basically the only ones now that can afford to live in Leslieville. So this is a tour of the cool houses, beautiful historic houses, weird quirky houses. Some are fairly large and some are really tiny but trust me they're all they're all going for at least around a million dollars and up two million some of them are you know over two two million dollars now like I uh, wrote previously in this video look at that check out that little tiny house just like sandwiched in there between those other houses In the middle of this video, there's a stop in a park that I discovered that's a weird little hidden park in the middle of nowhere. I like finding these hidden, quirky little places that most other people don't know about. So that's coming up later in the video after we get to the end of the street here. We're walking here between Queen Street West, Queen Street East rather, which is a very popular street in Toronto. And then the street goes all the way to Dundas Street, which is a pretty far walk with no, you know, or drive even when with no turnoffs. The, the way they made the streets in these days were really, really long. Can you imagine being a kid and having to walk to a store? You got to walk right down to the end of the street if you lived on Dundas. Okay, enjoy the video. Yikes! Check out these trees, they're massive. The trees in Leslieville are huge. There's so many like massive trees. And I also love the fact that there's so much uh, vegetation. People really, some people really have great lawns there. Great front yards. Check out all the different styles of houses too, and the different time periods that they were built. You can see that some are relatively new and some are really old, but very well maintained. Look at how nice and well taken care of some of these houses are. I don't know how old these houses are, but I'm sure some of them are really old. This neighborhood began as a small village back in the 1850s. The area was also known as a, a place where they made bricks to build houses. They had a lot of brick factories in the area. A whole lot of pollution, too. This area was also the site of metal processing factories and tanneries. Those industries left toxic ash on the surrounding neighborhoods. 
But over the last few decades, they've all been abandoned and the land has been cleaned up. It was between 2000 to 2010 when the area became gentrified and middle class people started moving in because by then the pollution was pretty much cleaned up. And now it's considered one of the hippest places to live, to dine, to hang out, to drink, to shop. You really have a lot of services. One interesting thing about Leslieville is that the Hells Angels used to have their headquarters here. They had this big house that they fortified with bricks and it was like a huge bunker and the police did a raid and tore down the place so they have now left the area years ago but it used to be like the headquarters of the Hells Angels. Although this area is pretty much an upper middle class professional neighborhood since about 1963, it's been an NDP stronghold, so it still has its working class sensibilities, I guess you'd say, because they've been voting NDP now since the 60s. Look how long this street is, with no turnoffs, no side streets, nothing, just one street completely all the way from Queen Street to Dundas. That is one long street. Imagine having to walk down that street to catch a bus or even to go to like a little variety store. Holy cow, that's a long walk. But damn, look at that beautiful vegetation. That is lush. This is like seven minutes of walking and still you haven't gotten to the end of the street. Okay, so now we're at the end of Brooklyn Avenue and we're heading on to Dundas Street East and we are heading west. And this is a weird little street because you have some people's garages facing the street. You don't see it here but there's parts of the street where the garages are facing this main street. I decided to take a little detour down the alleyway not knowing what I'd find. I assumed it would be full of graffiti because if you walk around central Toronto you will see a whole lot of little side alleyways with great graffiti. And there is a little bit of graffiti here but not as much as I was expecting. But then I just came upon and discovered something quite unusual that I don't think I've seen before in Toronto. Check out this weird little park hidden down the alleyway. I've been in this area many, many, many times and I had no idea that this little park was there. Just sort of hidden in the middle of, <laughs> in the middle of an alley. It feels so hidden and exclusive, kind of like a, 
some little secret little gem in the middle of this neighborhood, but kind of hidden down down the alley. And if you don't know about it, you would never, you know, happen upon this park just on your own. It's obviously a well-used park. You can see kids' toys around the park and, you know, things left there from the neighborhood population. It's weird to have a park facing people's um, parking garages in just like a back alley. It's so weird to me. I wonder how many more of these little hidden parks there are in Toronto. I love walking these little back alleys, exploring and just seeing what's down there. You never know what you're going to find. Although you usually do find some really good graffiti. I've seen some amazing graffiti all over Toronto. As a matter of fact, I did an update on Graffiti Alley that I will be putting out soon. They have some, they have a, it's changed since the last time that I filmed it. There's a whole bunch of new art and some really, really good pieces. So now we get back to the main residential streets, away from that hidden middle park. I haven't walked in this area for a couple of years and I'm really surprised at how much vegetation there is, how, how nice the yards are, how well maintained everything is. I don't remember seeing this much lush vegetation and all the plants and flowers and shrubs and all that kind of stuff. Also, the houses are really, really nice. I really love these houses. They're old, but they're well maintained. And, I don't know, they're just charming. I really, really like these houses, especially when you compare them to houses in the suburbs that are so generic and bland and you walk in areas where there's like a hundred houses and they all look exactly the same. Every one of these houses here has, their, has its own distinct character. I love the red brick. You see a lot of stained glass windows and beautiful little decorative details. Look at the fencing. Oh, wow. This just blows me away. The gardens here are amazing. I guess that's because all the wealthy people have moved in. Once you have people moving in with money, they're like, oh no, let's get some expert landscaping done here. You know, the houses are not huge. They're sort of medium-sized houses, but it's the land that's valuable in Toronto. Just to build any house in the central core of Toronto, it's going to be at least probably a million dollars. So I, I would not be surprised if these houses are selling anywhere from one to two million dollars. Even the smaller ones are probably like about eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars for the little tiniest properties. I have a friend that lives in the area, and when he moved in, his house costed $26,000 many, many, many years ago. And now his house, his house is worth well over a million dollars. So he's really made a lot of money. Because like back in the day, this was not a, a prime neighborhood. This was a very working class neighborhood. So you had a lot of poor... Well, you, you, you had poor people who were... Um, living as uh, renters. Uh, some of the houses back then were were sectioned off into boarding houses. So you had a lot of people that worked in the factories living in the boarding houses. And then you, the, the people that owned the houses were also people that worked in factories and um, sort of lower class, working class kind of people. But you won't find any of that now, unless you have families that have owned the houses, like my friend, for like 20, 30, 40 years. 
then you'll have working class people. But if anybody's bought a house here in the last 10 years, you have to have an income over $250,000 to afford a house here. So you pretty much have to be a well-paid professional. And this area is also changing a lot. This area has now become um, an area for filming movies and TV shows. There's a lot of film studios in this area and new ones moving in all the time, just south of Queen. There's a lot of areas there where they use where they use the warehouses to film movies and stuff. And Toronto has now become, I think it's the third largest film center in North America. A whole lot of movies are filmed here. So a lot of those people live in these houses, people that work in the film industry, people that work in tech. There's a lot of people that work in uh, the arts that live in these houses, but they're all well-paid professionals. We're almost back to Queen Street now. There's some three-story houses here. Those ones must be selling for quite a significant amount. Here's one of the newer houses. And Queen Street is the, the main retail strip. There's also a lot of bars and um, restaurants, lots of things like florists. It's a very artsy neighborhood. Okay, we're almost at the end of the walk here, now that, now that we're back at Queen Street. Okay, we are back out at, we are at Pape and Queen Street East. We can hop on the Queen Street streetcar and head back to downtown Toronto. There's the streetcar right there waiting, although it's going in a different direction. It's heading off to the beaches. If you take that streetcar and you go east, you're in the beaches, which is a very expensive neighborhood too. And those are the new condos that are popping up on this street. Six-story condos. Okay, we're all done. Adios, YouTube.